Welcome to Jack Rabbit Journal, wall-to-wall basketball at South Dakota State University. We have a sit-down interview with Dallas Cowboys fan Scott Nagy coming up after a two-win weekend for the SDSU men. A story on Reed Tellinghusen and George Marshall coming up later as well. Marshall is the Summit League Player of the Week this week after two of his best performances of the season. The Jackrabbits were at home on Wednesday against uh, Western Illinois. First game at home for Marshall, the transfer from Wisconsin, who just became eligible at semester. He had played his first seven games with the Jackrabbits away from home, but he goes for 17 points in his Frost Arena debut, showing off that rangy jump shot. He knocked down four threes in this game. The Jackrabbits get out to a 14-point halftime lead. Cody Larson adds 14.7 rebounds. DeAndre Parks adds 14 points. The Jackrabbits lead by as many as 33, and they romp in their first Summit League home game, 75-44 to over Western Illinois. And they keep on romping uh, with a stomping at Omaha on Saturday. Reed Tellinghusen knocks down a three and a three and a three more in the first seven minutes of the game. He goes for a season-high 19 points, and the game is close early. Jacks lead it by nine at halftime. Marshall pumps in a season-high 25. He scores eight straight points in a run early in the second half. The Jacks start to pull away. Redshirt freshman Lane Severin got some good minutes as well. He comes in, makes a three and a two midway through the second half. Larson and Marshall and Jake Biddle all end up fouling out in this game, but DeAndre Parks takes over at the end, and SDSU rolls at Omaha 87-68. to the Jackrabbit women, meanwhile, had some travel issues over the weekend. The Jacks were supposed to play in Fort Wayne on Friday, but uh, SDSU couldn't get out of Brookings because of the wind and the winter weather, so they were forced to play back-to-back on Saturday and Sunday. They end up winning one and losing one, both by one point. At Fort Wayne on Saturday, good game for Mariah Claren, 16 points and 8 rebounds. The Jacks total a season-high 19 assists in this game, but they also shoot a season-low 24% from the three-point line, uh, make just 5 of 21. Jacks lead almost the entire second half. Fort Wayne ties it up with a minute 25 to play. In the final minute, though, the Jacks miss three shots, but they get three offensive rebounds. Fort Wayne fouls Macy Miller with one second left. She makes one free throw, and the Jacks just get past the Dons, 65-64. to then, less than 24 hours later, back at it at IUPUI. And this has been a brutal game for the Jacks for whatever reason over the last three seasons. Claren leads SDSU again with 15 points and eight rebounds. Ellie Thompson comes off the bench with 13. But the Jaguars build an early lead in the second half, and uh, they hang on to win it. IUPUI leads by 10 with nine minutes to play. China Stevens, though, gives the Jacks a one-point lead with 25 seconds left. But Navena Markovic makes a jumper with eight seconds left to win it for IUPUI, 68-67. So the Jags have beaten the Jacks now in four of the last five games, if you can believe that, including three in a row at the Jungle in Indianapolis. Well, unfortunately, the travel troubles wiped out our weekly meeting with Coach Johnston, so no sit-down with AJ this week. Uh, but up next, men's coach Scott Nagy will talk some football and some philosophy and how his guys are starting to believe now that defense is the key. Jack Rabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Billionado.com. The Jackrabbit men are back to 2-2 two and two now in Summit League play after two wins over the weekend. Here is Coach Nagy on how things are starting to come around, but we talk a little bit of football first. Scott Nagy, let's talk about football first and why, why you are a Dallas Cowboys fan. Explain that first of all. I've been, been a Cowboy fan my whole life. Uh, I was born in Texas, and so I started there and in Texas. That, that's basically all there is, is Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. So I started that way, and uh, you know I've loved them ever since. It's been a little, a little more difficult for me when they got rid of Tom Landry. That hurt me. That 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 was uh, that that really hurt me deeply. Uh, but you know it's hard to it, it's hard just to give up on your team, uh, and it's hard for me to even watch them. So I, I kind of I'm I'm better off just to check the score. But can you explain to us what a catch is? And did, did you even watch the end of the? The Cowboys Packers game this weekend? No, I no, I just checked the score because I don't want to wreck everybody's day. <laughs> it would wreck my family's day if I watched the game. <laughs> so right. I just I would be better off to watch a movie and just check the score. <laughs> All right, fine. Um, talk about this weekend. 
and just what's what's turned a little bit, especially in these last two games, early in these last two games, to really get it going and uh, get things done? Uh, you know, I mean, everybody knows the answer. It's defense. Uh, our, our, our defense is better. We, we had the opportunity to get back to practice and just spend time working on what we do. And that's helped a lot. I think, uh, you know, we, we spent so much time when we were on the road focusing on what the other teams do and trying to guard that and figure that out. And, and uh, we just kind of stopped doing that here after the two, two losses on the road in conference. And, and we started uh, putting the focus on what we do and, and how we guard. And I think that's helped our team a lot. Just principles of defense more than worrying about what the other teams do. Principles of defense. Quit right. trying to figure out if they're running this play or running that play and just guard them. And, uh, a lot of times it's not even the X's and O's part of it, like how do you guard this player, what do you do? Sometimes it's just effort and desperation. You know, do I go under the screen or over the screen? At some point it's, you know what, I don't care. Just figure it out and get through it or we'll play somebody else. And I, I, our kids are starting to get back to that. All right. And you had some fight in your guys. It was like Lane Severin, some of these baby face guys that are new players. Him getting in there and mixing it up with Mike Rost and Poor. There was some good fight in your guys this weekend. Right? Really, really good fight. And, and, you know, like you say, Lane and... Uh, uh, Keaton off the bench. I mean, 12 rebounds in the first half between those two and 17 overall for the game. Just from those two, I mean, you're, you know, you're looking at a, a, a 6'3 guard and a 6'4, 6'5, 4 man. I mean, guys that you wouldn't expect, but but great fight, great effort. I mean, that that that's what it's all about anyway. This, this X's and O's and, and all that stuff is important, but it's not important if you don't play hard. Playing hard is the first thing that has to happen. Uh, then you can get to the rest of it. And, and those guys gave us great effort off the bench. And played 10 guys, even without Zach out there. Is that something where you're still trying to figure out who's going to play? and Or can you play 10 or 11 uh, all the way through here? Well, part part of playing 10 was the foul trouble that we had in the first half. I, I think if we didn't have the foul trouble, we probably wouldn't have played 10. But but we're comfortable going that deep. I mean, it's it's... Uh, the players that we put in the game, we feel good about. Everybody it. did something. Yeah, yeah. it's it's we're, we're deeper than we've been in a long time. I mean, some of it is youth, though. I mean, I looked out on the floor in the first half, and we had three freshmen uh, out there, and and you know, I don't generally think about that, but every once in a while, you look at it, I go, oh my goodness, three freshmen on the floor, but uh, they can all play, and they, they've all had very good experience, and at this point, they're they're not babies anymore. Talk about telling Houston a little bit. Has he been more than you thought he was going to be, or has no, he been a surprise? No, 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 really. Uh, my expectations were so high of him coming in that, that initially, you know, I felt a little disappointed uh, because I thought he should play better, which, you know, I mean, I, I should have enough experience to know that it doesn't matter how good a freshman is, he's going to struggle some. And he had some of those, but he's, he's really starting to get comfortable. He's such a confident kid, uh, doesn't really care uh, about what I say about his shooting. Uh, if he's open and he feels good, he's going to shoot it. And, and really, I, I, you know, I've said this before, I need guys like that, that that don't care what I think and aren't going to look over the bench every time they make a mistake. And Reed is one of those guys. He's just a very confident young man. All right. And I know you get after guys, but in, late in that game at Omaha, you're up by 20 and you're stomping and, and making sure people are doing things right. You just have to do it that way, don't you? Uh, you know, and I, I tend to be more that way when we have leads like that because I feel like uh, – you know, guys relax and don't play the way that, that we want to play and, and what got us that lead. Uh, when you look at we give up 19 offensive rebounds, uh, that, that doesn't – I'm not pleased with that. And to me, that kind of stuff comes back to haunt you later if you, if you don't get it figured out. And so fundamentally, we, we don't want to give up 19 offensive rebounds and 46 free throws. Uh, you're not going to win very many games doing that. And it's amazing that we won – uh, by the amount that we did. Now, it was our defense that did it for us because they shot 26%. But you can't count on that. What you can count on is rebounding and not putting people on the line. And, and you know, that, that's, that stuff has got to change for our basketball team and if, if we're going to be a championship-level team. That game got a little weird, though, didn't it? Where they, they were just almost throwing it up at the rim and going after it there in the second half, weren't they? A little bit? Yeah, I think that's that they figured out that was part of their yeah. – that was going to be their offense is, is throw it up and chase it and – uh, but, you know, I mean, that, that those are 50-50 balls, and, and they were getting most of them. And, you know, in, in my opinion, that means they're playing harder, and, and I never like that. All right. And you've talked about belief. What do you, when you talk about belief, what do you want your guys that I think they are now starting to believe in what? Well, believe that defense is, is the answer. That's who, that's who we need to be. That, that's the most important thing that will lead to good offense for us. Uh, and it has these past two games. So, uh, you know, and I think that they're, uh, again, starting to see that. I think that 
you know, we got away from it, and it was the coach's fault. It was my fault in particular. I'm the head coach, uh, you know, by, by, like I said, putting the focus more on the other team instead of what we're doing, and we're kind of getting back to just being fundamentally sound defensively. Up next, two of the new guys this year and two different paths to South Dakota State for Reed Tellinghusen and George Marshall. Jack Rabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Billionado.com. Welcome back to Jackrabbit Journal. The SDSU men's basketball roster this year includes nine new players between all of the freshmen and the red shirts and the transfers. Here are two of them that are making big contributions so far this season. Reed Tellinghusen is a six foot six true freshman from Sac City, Iowa, a town of about 2,000 residents. George Marshall is a six foot one junior from Chicago who is in his fourth year now of college. But both are getting on the floor for the first time this season at South Dakota State. Tellinghusen has an older brother who just graduated from SDSU, so Reed knew about the Jackrabbits as a high schooler. I went to a couple games because my brother actually uh, went here, so came to a couple games, came to the camps, and that's when they kind of started recruiting me. Marshall, on the other hand, had never heard of a Jackrabbit when he came out of high school. After helping his prep school win the Chicago Public League Championship, Marshall moved on to the University of Wisconsin and played in 35 games for the Badgers as a redshirt freshman. But an injury early in his sophomore season sent him to the bench. And when the team moved on without him, he felt it was time to transfer somewhere that he could play again. And that's when a current SDSU assistant coach made a connection. Joe Krabinoff, he was the video coordinator at Wisconsin, you know, the last year that I was there. And so he reached out to me, you know, the second I decided to transfer. He was actually the first coach I heard from. So Marshall made the move at semester time. And because of NCAA transfer rules, he had to sit out until the end of the first semester this year. It was definitely brutal and also got an injury at Wisconsin, but, it, but I didn't know until I got here. So I was out for like four months here uh, last semester. So. That was pretty tough, and then you know I got back into it in the summer, and you know things took off from there. But uh, you know this first semester of this year, it was tough. You know just watching the first seven or eight games where I couldn't play. When he made his Jackrabbit debut in December, Marshall put together three good games in three SDSU wins. But he says even then he was not back to 100% when he finally got back on the floor. I just didn't feel natural out there. Uh, you know. My feel for the game wasn't all the way back. Uh, my conditioning wasn't all the way there. So um, I was, really wasn't shooting it consistently. So a lot of the things, you know, weren't all the way there. But, you know, as time went by, I started to get the feel of the game back. Uh, it just got a lot more comfortable, a lot more confident. And, you know, things are starting to come together now. Telling Hughes says the same thing. It has taken him a while to get used to the size and the speed of the college game and he has been in and out of the starting lineup this season, which suits him just fine. It doesn't matter as long as I'm seeing the floor. I mean, I just want to I just want our team to win. It's a it's a team team game, so I mean, I'm just I'm just looking for the W. If I come off the bench, that's fine. If I if I get the start, it's whatever. He started last weekend at Omaha and knocked down five threes on his way to a season high 19 points. And as the Mavericks found out, it does not take much room for him to unleash that jumper from long range. Kind of depends how I'm feeling it. Uh, lately, I've been feeling pretty good, so not very, not very much room. I was feeling really great in Omaha. I mean, it was kind of a different defense. They they played off me a little bit. I've never never really seen that before. Marshall, meanwhile, has seen pretty much everything from his time in the Big Ten and now in the Summit League. He had a season-high 25 points in that win at Omaha last week. He says he's put a lot of extra work in lately to get the jump shot back on track, and if teams try to shut down his scoring, he says that he will find other ways to hurt them. Some games, you know, I'll need to score a little bit more. Some games, I'll need to facilitate more. You know, some games, you know, I really need to concentrate on defense. So, you know, I think it you know, depends on the game, uh, but you know, I'm willing to do anything I have to do to get the team to win. Both Jackrabbit rookies have been willing to give up the me for the we, and both have bought into the Coach Nagy belief that the we begins with D. I think we can uh, become better, become a tougher team. Uh, our defense can even get a little bit better. Um, our offense is 
uh, slowly coming along. I think we're a little slow on our offensive end. I think coach wants us to push it more. Um, so I think we can become a lot better team than what we are right now. With all the new guys that we have, I think we did a good job of, you know, really coming together as a team, uh, you know, in such, you know, a little amount of time. Uh, you know, we got a lot of freshmen, a lot of new guys. Uh, but at the same time, we still have some, you know, experience. Uh, you know, Jake and Cody, they've been here a couple years. You know, I've played college basketball the last two years. DeAndre, he's played the last two years. So I think we got some experience, but it's more about, you know, really coming together as a team, defensively, offensively, playing off one another. So, and I think, I think we've done a good job with that so far, and it'll only continue to get better. Up next, another Jackrabbit freshman on the women's hoop squad, Macy Miller, coming up in the Rabbit Fire interview. Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Billionado.com. Macy Miller is a freshman on the women's basketball team at South Dakota State. She tore up the Corn Palace in Mitchell, South Dakota as a high schooler, scored more points in her senior season than her cousin Mike Miller did in his. She was Miss Basketball. She set a state tournament scoring record. And now she is in the Rabbit Fire interview with David Brown. Why are you number 12? Because in high school you were 23. Yes, well in high school I wanted to be 12, but like our jerseys, like the smaller number, the smaller size. But both of my brothers, Jordan was 12 in high school, but 13 in college. And Jade was 12 in high school and 12 in college. So I really wanted to carry on that family number, so I wanted to be 12 in college. In high school you were 23, was that for just because it was a bigger number? It wasn't for like MJ or anything like that? Nope, I was just 23. <laughs> now we know that your current teammate was your former teammate at Mitchell High School, Carrie Young. So these are a couple Macy or Carrie questions. Who's the better student? Carrie. <laughs> Who's the better basketball player? Oh, um, Carrie. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, we're both really good players, and we're both excited to play with each other. In college. Who's the more fashionable one outside of basketball? Um, I'd probably say Carrie because. She really likes to dress up, and I'm more of a sweats person every day. <laughs> Dang, you're, you're taking your team. You're, you're, you're certainly quick to give praise. What is your favorite part of Mitchell, South Dakota? I'd have to say the Corn Palace, because I've had a lot of great memories playing basketball there, and you know, I, it's a great place. What is your number one pet peeve? My number one pet peeve would have to be people chomping their gum or snapping their gum really loud. I can't stand that. <laughs> Do any of your teammates do that? Um, yeah, there's a couple that I'll catch them jumping their gum. <laughs> Gonna name names or not? No. <laughs> <laughs> like a good teammate. All right, uh, what is your role outside of basketball? Obviously, there's the point guard and forward and center, but are you the jokester? Are you the person who keeps everyone in line? What, what's your role outside? I'm more of a shy person, so I'm just kind of behind the scenes, you know, laughing at jokes, but I'm a shy person. <laughs> what is your favorite AJ moment in your short time here? Um, my favorite AJ moment would have to be in a game when I went up for a shot block. And he asked if anyone in Mitchell knew how to take charges. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> were, you, were you offended or did you take it in good fun? No, I, take, I took it in good fun. All right, what is your guilty pleasure? My guilty pleasure would have to be food. I love eating. And it's mainly like lunch food, like steak or chicken. I love any kind of food, but those are my guilty pleasure. Well, speaking of that, when's the last time you ate fast food? I know you got to keep in shape for the season. The last time would probably be last night. <laughs> I had it for supper at Culver's. <laughs> Did it taste good? Yes, it was really good. <laughs> All right, last one. Who would win a horse contest between you and your teammates? Um, I'd probably pick Megan Watashik. She's a very good three-point shooter, and you know, she's probably can make any shot out there. No one has picked themselves <laughs> yet. You all seem to be very complimentary of one another. <laughs> China picks you, do you yeah. believe her, or do you, you still think Megan? Probably Megan. I'd go with Megan with Tashik. All right, simple enough. Thanks for playing. When we come back, a look at the week ahead for the Rabbit basketball teams. Jack Rabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Billionado.com.
Welcome back to Jackrabbit Men host IUPUI on Wednesday night. Just getting started as we speak. As a matter of fact, the Jaguars have been a surprise to almost everybody in the first couple weeks of the Summit League season. They have two league wins already. That is one more than the uh, Jaguar men's team had all of last season in Summit League play. New head coach Jason Gardner playing a lot of guys right now. They played 11 players in their last game, which was a win at home against Denver, who beat the Jacks uh, in the league opener, by the way. And then on Saturday afternoon, the Coyotes come to Brookings. Tyler Larson has been really good for USD so far. He is third in the league in scoring. The Coyotes already have wins over Denver and Fort Wayne, a couple of the league favorites. So we will see what happens. We will have the men's game live here on Saturday at 4.30 is the tip on Midco Sports Network. The Jackrabbit women also play USD on Saturday. That is a 2 o'clock start at the Dakota Dome in Vermilion. It's the first clash of the season between the two league favorites and the first meeting since the Coyotes stunned the Jacks in the Summer League Tournament last March. USD has most of that same team uh, this year with Nicole Seacamp and Margaret McLeod and Taya He Miller and Rachelle Contreras all back. Going to be a good game uh, between the men, or the uh, women that is, in Vermilion on Saturday. Before that though, the Jackrabbit women host Omaha on Thursday night. The Mavs are 0-3 so far in the league. Uh, the Jacks have beaten Omaha six in a row since the Mavericks joined the Summit League. Check us out on YouTube and Twitter. We'll see you next week on Jackrabbit Journal.